thank you, Noel. Our honored guest, uh, Attorney Ted Pasqua, Deputy Director General of PESDA. My uh, dear friend, uh, Dr. Shilito Abito. Uh, Mr. John Simon, our uh, ASEC uh, Chairman, Philippines. Professor Joyce Caragay. Uh, Dato Director Dinizon, Jay Soria. Uh, colleagues from Ripus Asia, my friends, ladies and gentlemen. Can we show the PowerPoint? I'd like to uh, introduce uh, the people behind this, uh, uh, maybe the, the first. Uh, scroll up. Yeah, okay. So the title of my presentation is The SSE Challenge How to Develop Inclusive and Sustainable Supply Chains of solidarity based community enterprises. This is a new level of cooperation. It's beyond the concept of cooperative. It's a partnership for sustainable development. Next slide, please. Now, the people behind ASEC Philippines, if you see a person there at the center with a head uh, scarf, that's uh, our chairman, Jun Simon. Uh, that picture was taken in Morocco. Uh, he was not converted, but that's what you have to wear you know, in Morocco in order to protect your head from the heat of the sun. Then up there is uh, uh, Dr. Jeng Huan, our director for the ASEC Philippine Secretariat, vice chairman also. And to the left, of course to the right, you see it, is Pinky Copino, our secretary, board secretary. Then at the upper right is Dr. Rosalinda Ofreneo, member of uh, the board, and also chairman of HomeNet Philippines. Down there is uh, our uh, uh, chairman or president of the uh, Life Learning uh, Organization of Peace, Pilar Abito. And then uh, there you have, uh, I think, the most handsome person there. That's myself. Sorry, uh, but uh, I hold the mic. And then our uh, colleague, Boots Lukban, Global Pro, uh, multipurpose cooperative and down to the left side Tetai Plantilla she is the executive director of the uh, Federation of People's Development Sustainable Development Cooperatives and up on the left is Jay Laksamana executive director of the Foundation for Sustainable Society Incorporated so that is the ASK Philippines then next slide uh, our friends and part of our extended family. Of course, then uh, Joyce is there, uh, Ed Canela is there, Billy Guanberto, Paz Villegas, uh, all these uh, people. Uh, most, of, most of you are probably here. Uh, these were the uh, people, some are absent here. But uh, you see, we are going to have a group photo uh, later, so that next year, your picture will be included. You know? In that. Then next slide. Our friends from uh, abroad. The network of Ripus Asia extends to the, uh, several countries. And you can see there, you know, the first line, these are the pioneers, Shigeru Tanaka, Japan. Ira is there, you know. Uh, Dr. Denison is there. Bambang is Mawan, he's not here, but uh, he is from the uh, uh, Binasodaya. Uh, well, Peggy, uh, could not come because he's running for vice mayor in Manado. Then you have there Shumi Kim and many others. So next slide. Now, maybe some of you attended the uh, forum in Angeles City. So uh, you might be part of this picture that was in 2012. Next slide. Then the PIP RIPES International Meeting, it was held here. So some of you might have participated here. Next slide. And then this was last year. This was the first uh, Philippines of Dati Kanai Forum that was uh, conducted in the other building, Institute of Small Scale Industries, uh, because this hall was not available. Next slide. So uh, we came here to work. 
we came here to, uh, we have a task to do. We have tasks to do. What are the core tasks of our forum? Number one, we have to come to an agreement. Uh, I think a conference or a workshop that does not come to an agreement will not be effective. So what are we going to agree on? We need to agree on a template. Template of a well, new cooperation. We call it South-South because it is, you know, among developing countries, among developing organizations. Triangular because we need uh, support from developing, I mean, developed countries on the agenda of how to strengthen community-based enterprises. And our potential clients will be local governments, local enterprises, social enterprises, and community, I mean, civil service, uh, civil society organizations in developing countries. So we are not only talking about the Philippines. The second task is to launch the program, South-South Triangular Cooperation Program in 2016. So we are just preparing for the launch. Next slide. Why are we doing this? Why do we have to prepare? Number one, just September 25, 2015, the UN approved the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Uh, sustainable Development. It has five peace, people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. The UN will be looking for sustainable development models. So uh, we are preparing for that. We hope that we can present a sustainable development model that can be adopted. And then the ASEAN Economic Community will become operational by January 2016. What can we offer ASEAN? There are a growing number of multi-billionaire and multi-millionaire cooperatives in the Philippines. Where are their money going to in the stock market? So this is a big challenge because we could reorient that you know, to community-based enterprises. There is tremendous growth potential for SMEs through social solidarity economy development approach. A great number of new graduates and professionals are seeking jobs, extra income. Of course, this is a problem, but I see it as an opportunity. If we are able to develop a program that will employ them, that will create jobs for them, this is a great opportunity. And then there is untapped growth potentials in Philippine agriculture and processing industry. And we will see this in our cases today. Next slide. So how does Reapers Asia or ASEC propose to meet the challenge, this new level of development? We have to create a template. The first component of that template is where are the projects? Where are the realities? What are the best practices out there? Are we talking of concrete models or are we talking about mere ideas? No, we are talking about concrete realities, concrete projects. That's why in this forum, we're going to present four models. So we have, we have these models, and we would like to show that they are there already. The second template are, uh, is, where are the experts in this new model? The experts are there, but we do not have standards. We do not have mechanisms to employ them. That is our task. Uh, that uh, we should be able to form a group, an expert group, that when the UN local governments and developing countries will ask, where are the people who can help us cascade this development model? We have experts who can, uh, we, we can tap. And then we need to pull a, a develop a financing system. Uh, right now, we have uh, scattered uh, funds but wh what we need to do is adapt a system that can pull this. Now, all of these subsystems, I'm happy to say that this has been uh, demonstrated in the case of one of the cases, the San Juan uh, Coconut Producers and the Processing Cooperative. Uh, there is a project that was developed by professionals. Then we have an agreement between the professional uh, helping organizations and the cooperative. So we have modeled this. And then we have also modeled the pooling of resources. Only that, instead of a bank pooling the resources, a person pulled it in the person of Mr. Billy Gualberto, 
because we trusted him. You, know? you need a trust department of a bank in order to have a full formation uh, trust agreement. But we need to institutionalize this. In other words, it is possible because one of the cases we're going to review has done this already, although in rudimentary form. So this is what we'd like to do in order that when governments come to us and say, where is your template, we can show them so it's easier to uh, engage in development. Next slide. So how do we jump start? Where do we go? Two simple, doable steps for discussion November 5. So don't go away. We need to discuss this until tomorrow. Number one, we have to start a dialogue on the components of the program. We, as uh, Dean Kanaka and Dean Dangerous were saying, we need principles, ethical principles to ground our new level of cooperation. So we'll discuss that tomorrow. We need also to organize uh, a training course. Now, the training course, in this training course that we're going to launch in March 2016, the participants are us, and the teachers, the trainers are also us. So those who would like to participate in this new challenge, you have to go through this training course, and you have to participate. There are no teachers except ourselves. We will teach one another. We will learn from each other. This is the approach. What is the content of the training course? We're going to discuss it here tomorrow. Number two, let us jointly plan to launch this in March 2016. So two doable steps. If these things we can agree on tomorrow, I think we have done a lot already. So thank you very much for listening.